Eu sou uh, estudião de Facebook. Facebook. Um, eu não entendo português, mas eu falo um pouco. JavaScript, padrões de JavaScript. O senhor é brasileiro e eu não sou americano. O senhor sabe onde fica o restaurante? Uma cerveja muito gelada. Quanto, Quanto custa duas cervejas? Eu bebo demais. Onde fica o banheiro? Onde fica o banheiro? This is all I know. Um, uh, I'm Stoyan, uh, engineer from Facebook, and I'm here to talk to you about React, which is a new JavaScript library from Facebook for building uh, user interfaces. This is the about me slide. <laughs> uh, I don't know who that guy is. Um, so a friend of mine challenged me. I posted this on some social network, and he challenged me to use it in a slide in the presentation. So. There you are. Um, all right, so React um, uh, is a JavaScript library developed at Facebook and uh, Instagram. It's open source, it's on GitHub slash Facebook React. And it's a library for building uh, user interfaces. And I let, uh, I'm here to introduce you uh, how that works exactly. So before that, I would like to um, just make a the separation between building web applications uh, versus building more traditional web pages. Because um, in pages, there's uh, the separation of concerns, this common best practice that you should have your content, uh, HTML versus your uh, presentation, CSS versus your behaviors in JavaScript. And React breaks this uh, separation a little bit. Um, but this is a good idea when you're dealing with mostly static pages, but applications are a little different, and uh, the markup changes all the time, the content changes all the time. From user action, new data coming from the server, maybe actions from other users, um, or simply time passes by. So the UI needs to be rebuilt over and over again. And this is what React is aiming to make much easier. So today, we're stuck uh, with building our web applications using the DOM. Um, we just ended up there. It was probably not designed to the web applications uh, use case. And after all, it has a document in the name. Uh, and we all have this love-hate relationship with DOM. On one hand, it's familiar. Everybody knows it, kind of simple. And it seems to do the job. And we have to use it right now. Uh, but then on the other hand, you know, starting with browser inconsistencies is a bit of a pain. And then the API is kind of really verbose, um, right? You start hunting for nodes with uh, get element by tag name, get element by ID, query selector. Once you find it, you start series of updates. So create node, append child, create node, uh, create text node, create element, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the DOM is uh, inherently, inherently slow. Um, we uh, all know that best practice that you should try to touch the DOM lightly because Every time you do it, uh, the browser has to do some rendering, layouting, um, which are kind of costly processes. Or the general best practice for high performance is just touch it very lightly. Um, and then there are all the event handlers, right, that you have to deal with. And let's say when you remove something that has an event handler on it, you might cause a memory leak because nothing else is pointing to that um, event handler anymore. Uh, so a lot of stuff to deal with. And that's where React comes in, uh, introduces not introduces, but uses the concept of uh, components. So you have components that knows how to render itself. And then you have data. So the data, as soon as the data changes, the view just updates magically and very efficiently. And uh, works fine in cross-browser. So just think about the last time you needed to create a table from some sort of array of data, right? You start, oh, create a table, create a row, create a cell, add some text node, uh, append, append to the table cell, append to the table row, and so on and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden, one of these content is a link. Oh, create element, set the attribute, create a text node, append to the link, append to the TD. It's a pain. And then the data changes. Oh, again. Okay. 
So what are you going to do now? Do you keep references to all those objects you've created? Probably not very efficient. We just start traversing all the nodes. Oh, give me the fifth row and the third cell in there and just let me do my thing. Or do you simply rebuild the whole thing? Because after all, you already spent some code building the table initially. You can put it in a function and then just say, oh, this is my new data, do it again. But then what if you have some event handlers in there, right? You have to take care of cleaning those up and so on. And what if one of those nodes is a user input and you, the user loses the input? Um, but rebuilding everything from scratch seems like the, the most sane option. Well, uh, if you look at uh, React, then, then you have one table component and nested in there a row and child components. And then you have some data and you say, okay, React, deal with it. You know, just render this thing. I don't care how. And then when the data changes, you just say, hey, my component, this is your new data. And it, it just works. So how does exactly uh, React deal with, with all that stuff? Uh, it introduces the, this concept of a virtual DOM. So you build all your UI in JavaScript and, um, DOM, uh, and React creates uh, sort of a representation of that future DOM tree. Uh, in, in a simple JavaScript object with just some properties, and this is all. And then whenever it needs to render, uh, every component uh, has to provide a render function. So um, having this virtual DOM is just updated into the DOM in the most, most efficient way. And then when the data changes, um, React will make a, basically a diff between the old data and the new data and see where something is changed. And we'll call that render method again and um, to get the new the DOM node, of course. And then we'll figure out what is the change and what is the most efficient way to update only this little thing that has changed. So the updates are very efficient. Uh, and you can uh, usually do it in a single tick of a request animation frame. There's also the idea of um, the synthetic events, right? All the events are re-implemented in, uh, in React because uh, they're just, it's just too hard to work with, uh, with uh, the browsers. And it uses event delegation, so uh, when you render a component, uh, or you can think of, of uh, React components as little apps uh, in the page, and you give them something, an existing node in the DOM tree, and they say, okay, do your thing there. And React has a, has a topmost node, right? And it will delegate all the events there. And um, so although you define click handlers on a specific component, uh, we'll use event delegation to handle that most efficiently. And because the events are now all done again in JavaScript land, um, then you can make sure that they are W3C compliant, they work cross-browser, and you know just everything works as uh, you expect it to be. So you don't have to do always this E window event or is it passed to my callback? Do you have event.target or event SRC element uh, because it's IE and so on? So you don't have to deal with it, it just works. Um, but again, with the DOM and uh, with, the, with the events as well, there's always a reference to the original native event uh, and you can always get a reference to the actual DOM node if you want to do something specific yourself. So bubbling, capturing, everything works. And there's some um, little fixes that uh, React took some liberty. Uh, for example, the on change on a user input, it works as you expect it to be. As you type, it, it fires as opposed to the way it does in the browser when you um, blur, when you go away from the field, that's when it um, That's when on change fires in the browsers. All right, so uh, some additional benefits of the virtual DOM is uh, because it's all in JavaScript land, that means it's much, much faster to, to traverse and, and compute those diffs and so on because it's uh, insanely faster to do all those manipulations with JavaScript object as opposed to you know, crossing that expensive bridge and going to DOM land. And that also means that you can render server side. So um, because you build all the UI in JavaScript, uh, the JavaScript has to arrive before the user sees anything, which is not a very good idea, but because it's the DOM can be built server side, so you can render the first, uh, the initial view on the server, so send all the markup. Then whenever JavaScript arrives, it attaches all the event handlers and carries on from there. That also means something that, um, it's not yet in React, but something to think about. 
uh, because it's all in, in JavaScript land, then if there's uh, specifically heavy operations, they can be uh, put into web workers. Web workers don't know about DOM, but we don't need to because it's all virtual. It's just a, just a simple JavaScript object with properties. So these are the selling points if you go to the, into the repository and see that it's declarative. You declare your interfaces. Um, then it's efficient because of the updates and because the event delegation very, very fast. And it's also flexible because it was introduced at some point. It was probably a year and a half, two years ago at Facebook. Um, and you cannot just simply rewrite everything to start using React. So you have to work with whatever's available. So that's why from the day one, uh, it has to work with anything. So you can use jQuery, uh, you can use, uh, I don't know, Backbone, anything. Um, anything you like. Because the, uh, React is not an MVC framework, it's not an application framework to do. Um, it's not MVC. It, you can only think of uh, being the V in the MVC, just uh, uh, the rendering the view part. So um, you can use anything else for uh, for the rest. I uh, Just component that knows how to render, get some data, render, done. So um, th that's where the, the flexible selling point comes in. So let's take a look at what, how a component looks like. So this is how you, um, this is how you render a component, right? You have created something called my widget, and you send some properties to it. And this is the only way, the only time that you have to touch the DOM yourself is just say, okay, React, do your thing in that node, and take it over from there. Uh, so as you can see, the, the widget is uh, just a function call, the the component. Uh, and so this can be, can be and the widget can have uh, children. So you say, okay, this is the properties of, uh, this is just a JavaScript object with uh, properties for the, for the widget. And then inside of my widget, I'll have a head with its own properties, and then I'll have a body, and in that body, I'll have a paragraph or span, uh, and so on. So we can you can nest then combine those components any way you like. That's the whole idea of creating really tiny and reusable components. Um, but because this can uh, kind of quickly become a little bit hard to um, follow, and maybe uh, there are too many you know brackets going on here, and that's why there is uh, something additional called JSX. Uh, so JSX is a separate technology. It's not part of React, but um, and you don't have to use it. Um, React can work without JSX. But for convenience, especially for people who know how to write HTML, XML, um, not programmers, designers also, uh, they can write JSX and then compile this thing to JavaScript. So this is uh, the, the example that will probably scare you a little bit. Uh, because we have XML here inside of the method call, and <gasps> what's going on here? So this is my content. It's mixed in the in my behaviors. What's going on here? I don't want that. I like JSON, and you don't have to do it. It's separate. It's a convenience, and so obviously this thing. So this is just like regular XML. Um, all the all the browser tags are included. Uh, provided by this uh, React DOM thing. So, um, how do th this is obviously not working JavaScript, right? If you load it in the browser, not much will happen. Uh, so you have to transform the, the JSX into JavaScript. So you can do it with a simple build script, or you can do it on the fly. And the build script, of course, is what you should be using, but just for just for trying stuff out, um, if you don't, don't know how to install, somebody doesn't know how to install an NPM module, and then they can just use a script to do it on the fly. So let's see the Hello World example. So you start with the with your HTML page, which only includes React uh, and includes your application, and it has uh, somewhere to render um, to render this component. And you start with the with the source of Hello World, which uses JSX in this case. And then you say, okay, Hello World in H1. Um, 
then you go and this is the prerequisite. You have to install something called React Tools, and with it comes uh, JSX utility. And you can just say uh, transpile, transform the source, everything in the source directory into the build directory. And then, of course, you, you set it up to run continuously as you develop. So as soon as you save something, it's you know, by the time you refresh the page, it's already built. Um, and this is what the build uh, hello JavaScript looks like, right? So it's pretty much the same, only this thing is, is different because it's now working JavaScript. Um, the, the other option is uh, on-the-fly transform. This is just for experimentation, and um, if, you, if you don't, if you for some reason cannot install um, the tools, so you can just uh, again, uh, include React, and this time the source of hello world, and put it in a type something that doesn't exist, or the browser doesn't uh, try to execute this JavaScript, and then you have to ins include this transformer, and JS, which will which will find this thing, um, load it, and uh, transform it into j regular JavaScript. Again, this is not good for performance, and but it's just for experimentation, just to get started. So JSX is very very lightweight transformation. Um, I just changing that XML into JavaScript calls. And it keeps the line numbers so that when you, when you do lins or you have some problems, then you can uh, follow back to, to the original and, and have all the line numbers preserved. And it also allows you to write JavaScript. So I guess you can think of, uh, of the JSX as sort of a template. Uh, and you know when you introduce a, a template thing of some sort, then you have to come up with a new syntax to do ifs and loops and uh, in this case, I uh, just open uh, curly braces and, and do JavaScript in there. So here is an example of that, right? So I have the list component, and I pass an array of items. So all you do is just open those square bracket, uh, curly braces and, uh, and, do, and add some JavaScript in there. It can be a simple c condition ternary, or it can be a loop. It can be anything inside of there. So this example is because uh, you know it's a very long flight from uh, Los Angeles to here. So of course I had to do those slides in React. I mean, um, so it's not um, probably not a very good example because the the, the power of React is um, to, to when you have a lot of changes in the data so that it does all the efficient updates. We're here just changing slide, not much, uh, not all that interesting, but still I had to do it. Um, and. Um, to make it a little bit more interesting, um, I just added some option to update something, as if you're creating an application for creating slides. And just want to show you how, how this was implemented and how simple it is. So this is the, the working thing, right? You have a slide component and a, and a list component. That's what we have to build. And, and then you can, this is the, the, the slide component is the whole thing. Uh, it has a title property, and then it has the list item as a child. This list item has some data. In this case, the data is only those two points. And then when you start typing here, then you just update the data. And, uh, and React renders the new set of data uh, for you. Right? So, so if you type something, right, it uh, changes immediately. Then if you press Enter, it kind of commits it. So you type something else and so on. Um, so I just wanted to show you, let's see. If that'll work. Right. So this is uh, Firebug, right? So you can see uh, this um, the update here. So although you're resetting all the data, you're saying to React, this is your new data. Uh, it's not appending something to a list and so on. You can say, this is my data now. Do it. Uh, and it's not going to replace everything, but it will just update. I don't know if you can see here the yellow uh, stuff. Um, you can see that in the DOM, that yellow part is just what, what updates, right? There's a single node, although you're, you're changing the whole state. All right. So this is how it, it looks like, and, and how does it, uh, how was it built? So you can have two components in, uh, two basic types of components. One is stateless, that just renders something, and the other one is stateful, that, that has state that changes and needs to re-render. So you, you define your component like this, and the only thing you need to do is implement a render function so it knows how to render. And then, then you go ahead and, and 
and do how it should look like. In this case, a DIFA heading and some children. And so all the properties that are passed here, all right, this is a property of the slide component, are available as these props. Right? So you have this props title, and we're going to put a title here in the, in the H1. And then whatever can be, the content of the slide can be anything, so whatever it is, we'll just render it underneath. Right? So you have access to the props.children, which is an, an array of, uh, of all the nested um, child components in there. And this is all you're done with the slide. And you use CSS to do some formatting and so on. And this is the stateful list that uh, has dynamic data that changes and the list needs to update. So in this case, uh, in this case you have something called this state. So this is the, the current state of your component, the current set of data, which is again just a JavaScript object, and then you can do anything you want with it. In this case, first you have to define one function to get the initial state. In this case, very simple, I'm just passing to uh, creating this state object, uh, and I'm just passing whatever properties are, whatever is in the items property, if you probably, all right, so the list component had a uh, had items property with some array. Um, all right, so my initial state is just copying the properties into the state. And then the render function puts a form in the UI list, and as you can see, again, you can open the brackets and just do a simple map function and map all the items to, to a list item. And then you have an input. So then we need to implement the uh, how to handle changes, submit. And, uh, and changes on change. All right, so uh, let's see how this is done. Right, so in this case, it's, it's the same thing, just updating the state. This is the, the key here, that you, set, you, you call the method setState and pass the new state, the new, the new array, the new uh, object, uh, all your data. And in this case, React will re-render everything. So you know, there's some logic whether this is a preview, just typing, or this is a submit, and so on. Not that, not all that interesting, um, but this is the this is the key here. You have access to this state, but uh, you don't update the state directly because uh, you you don't know what's the you, you cannot tell React to update it right now. So you might get some weirdness. So that's why you use the set state method and let it do its job. So the submit is is uh, you know just setting this preview flag to false and cleaning up the, um, the input field. So in this case, as you can see, there's a, there's a method called get DOM node. So if you want uh, to do something specific here, let's say you use jQuery and you need a DOM uh, to start from somewhere, you get it um, using get DOM node and then do your uh, normal DOM updates. But most of the time, if, you, if you're using React, you don't have to do that because React knows how to render and you just send it data. And there is this refs here, so you can use, uh, right. you can use this ref thing to, to refer to something. Most of the time you don't need it. You need it only in, in those um, cases where you want to do something outside of React with it, or just need to address it somehow. All right, so this was all for the uh, state and the list. Um, and this is all, this is basically a simple to-do sort of application. Uh, as you can see, just changing the data and let React take care of the most efficient updates. Um, and although, uh, let me show you this, I think it's kind of important, the list. Right, although you have on submit here and you have on change here, those events are not attached to, to the actual DOM nodes, but they will just propagate and will will be handled at, uh, at the root of uh, of the DOM tree that React creates. Um, so that's why you don't have to worry about cleaning up all the event handlers because they are not really on that node, but they're you know, handled centrally. And that's why removing nodes is, is just fine. All right, so what about inheritance, right? You want to reuse components. Um, like I said, it's a good idea to start with really small and really single purpose um, components. So you can use composition, of course. You can uh, just 
put them as children and uh, nest them one into the other. And that's how we use if, if this is a simple button input or a text um, I don't know, or a complete uh, widget of some sort. Uh, and the other option is if, you, if it's this functionality you need, it's not really in a, doesn't have a place in a component, but it just is some, some uh, object of something. Then you can just use mixins, and there's this component that when you when you define your component, you can say mixins, and then pass any anything else that should be mixed into the uh, into your component. All right, transform example. Mm. Let's see, so yeah, as a as a sort of a playground of play, playing with uh, with JSX, uh, I did this simple thing where. You can start typing some uh, some JSX code, right? Right. If, if there's something wrong, you get the errors immediately, and then oops. then uh, you see how it's uh, transformed into into normal JavaScript, uh, and with some here's some examples of you know simple components and very readable, um, but so the way this thing works is again ex extremely simple to implement. All right. So we have let's see, we have two text areas and one event handler on one of the text areas saying handle change. So you can change something from the buttons from the examples here, right? Or you can um, uh, you can change it by typing, and it needs to transform, right? In this case, you say uh, handle change is just a call to a transform method. And the transform method is that this is all there is. So the state of this little widget uh, has, is, again, it's a JavaScript object that has uh, source code, the result of the transformation, and any error messages. And you start with, uh, with just a dog block here. So the, the whole transform function is just calling this uh, JSX transformer. Uh, again, this is a JavaScript um, thing. And you, you try. You try to transform the code, and if everything is successful, you set the new state to say, "This is the new code. There are no errors, and this is the result." And that's all. And then React renders it. Or if there's any errors here, you just say, "This is the source. I have no result, but uh, here is my error message." And that was all for it. So, as you can see, it's nice and reactive. And you see the the input immediately. And now, because this is a, a React component, and my slideshow also happens to be written in React, that means I can simply reuse this thing and use this component here in the slides, right? So, uh, and just question of you know again some more formatting or right. In this case, I don't have any examples. Um, so let's see the way to the way to use this thing. So this the, the whole slide slideshow application is about. Hundred lines, some of which you know have to do some calculations and make sure that the, the f my code examples are not too big and not not really much to it. Right, just updating slides and the slides are defined in this slideshow thing. And then you just put new slide, new slide. Again, like I showed, list item inside of a slide, and this is all. And for the transformer, there it is. You just say transformador and pass it an array of examples if you want to. And this is it, and just works. So um, a few closing words about the JavaScript, um, about reasoning about building the application in JavaScript, building all the UI. Right? You're breaking this paradigm of you know separating the content from the behavior, but it's really done for more static pages and not for, for content that changes all the time. It's in applications, it's all about the data that changes over time. So you don't have to do any more node hunting, right? You don't have to say a query selector or get elements by in and so on and so forth. Um, and it turns out, if, if you look at, uh, at the JavaScript applications that work with the DOM, you notice that uh, uh, people spend quite a bit amount of time just finding the stuff that they need to update. And there's no more of those verbose create element, uh, you know, a pen child and so on. Um, and again, because it's all in JavaScript, that means you can render it a node. And, uh, and but uh, I think 
traditionally this has been kind of a, you know, we just say that you can, and of course you can because the library is, is written on the JavaScript, but it's up to you. But I ju just when I was backstage, uh, one of the developers sent me a message saying uh, that he'll have an, a repo in about 20 minutes, or maybe it's up there. You may want to mention that we are going to open source a project that lets you do one-click server rendering. So um, it must be on GitHub, maybe. Um, see. So if you've never been to GitHub slash Facebook, uh, you may want to try it. Ah, no internet. Uh, <laughs> of course. And um, because of, I was surprised how many open source projects there are that I didn't know about before I joined. Um, there's also something there called uh, running out of time. Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah. There's also another project called uh, XHP. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's uh, basically the same idea that has been used in Facebook for quite a while, where you define your interface. Uh, it's for PHP. Uh, same idea like JSX. Um, you you write the, the, uh, I, the you define the components, your PHP components inside of XML, and seems to be working fine. It's been used for years now. Uh, anyway. All right. So a lot of projects here, and maybe there's this this new one that uh, lets you do very easily rendering the, f the first view on the server side. Because otherwise, starting with a blank page and waiting for JavaScript to arrive uh, is probably uh, not a good idea. Let's see. I think it was called React. Uh, maybe not yet. All right. I think it should be called React Pages. Something like that. Um, all right. I'll tweet when I found the URL. Um, or maybe it's undeveloped. Anyway, I'm not going to look for it now. All right, so um, since today you should be able to, to do easy server side rendering of the initial view as well. So, um, yeah, this thing has been used in, uh, in Facebook for, um, like I said, about a year and a half, two years. and. Um, and then um, at some point, uh, Instagram joined Facebook, and they didn't have a website at all. They just had mobile applications. So th they decided to use React to build um, the whole site. So it's an example of a, of a whole application, the, the whole Instagram profiles and whatnot, entirely built in, uh, entirely built in um, React. And it's for the Facebook main site, it's used um, quite a bit of things. Uh, the chat, for example, is all React. The, um, when you post something, right, then you have comments and likes and so on. So this part with the comments and likes is also very dynamic, time changes. You type something, something else happens, somebody else comments and so on. So this, done, this thing is also done in React. And there's some uh, also uh, some interface for advertisers, also entirely in React. So it's been used for a while and uh, seems, seems to be working pretty well. Um, and it's, uh, it's really, I'm happy that uh, we were able to open source this because traditionally you haven't seen many front-end um, projects open sourced from Facebook and that's because there's a, it, it's kind of coupled with, and this is the excuse, it's kind of coupled with, uh, with some back-end uh, systems for, um, for creating the, the, the most efficient packages, JavaScript and CSS packages that uh, is using real user data and thing, looking at patterns, where, which components usually go together and packaging them and so on. So it's kind of coupled. But this was now with joining, uh, Instagram joining and having no, they, having, uh, they have no, nothing on the Facebook stack. So it was another um, reason to have React completely separate from everything else. and. Uh, this is really nice that it happened. So that was all I had for you. Muito obrigado. And <laughs> Do you have time for questions? Yeah. All right. What about? Uh, yes. Uh, what do you say about Angular in analogy to React? What do you say about what? Sorry, I didn't Angular JS. Angular. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know Angular, nope. so I cannot really speak. But um, uh, there was a there was a post from uh, 
uh, one guy from Khan Academy, uh, because Khan Academy used React to build some, some fancy uh, exercising something. So he was explaining that uh, Ember was, uh, has a little bit more of a, a steeper learning curve. You have to learn, I don't know, how many new concepts before you can start. And I think Angular is end-to-end -end framework where this is you know, much simpler. And I'm pretty sure you can use Angular and, Re and build the interfaces with React. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that React, the whole thing, gzipped and minified, is, I think, 18K. So you're not paying much price for, for using it. Hey, uh, how do you test this JSX stuff? Uh, good question. <laughs> it's, uh, it's still lacking in this department. Right? But it's open source, right? All right. Thank you very much again. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you.